this is Linda Eamon, Eamon Arts, welcome to my world. Today I'm going to do some printing in watercolor. Kind of takes me back to when I was a little girl and loved to print, and I've printed all through my life. So this is something that I think you'll just enjoy doing, and this is called Romaine Roses. So what I did is I took a piece of romaine lettuce, and I cut off the bottom, and it gives me an image that we're going to be using. So I've got two of them cut. I'll set this aside. And we're going to be using those as our roses, our romaine lettuce um, roses. So I'm going to take a little bit of a um, X-Acto knife here, and I'm going to cut the back of the paper off of an aqua board. I'm going to show you three different surfaces that you could print on. You may not have the aqua board and this would be something that it has a little more texture to it. Then we have a piece of hot press arches 140 cold press, uh, hot press. This one is arches 140 pound um, cold press and you can see this one's smooth and this one is textured. It'll give us a little bit of a different look. All right, so the way we're going to do it is we are using M. Graham watercolors. I have taken and pulled out quinacridone rose. I've put out um, some nickel quinacridone gold and some quinacridone rust and hooker's green just to have it ready. I'm going to get my brush ready and then I'm going to fully load and I've got a pretty good amount of paint out there. It's not real juicy. You don't want it extremely wet um, and juicy because you want to be able to use it more like an ink. So you're going to take your brush and you use the belly of the brush, the um, thick part of the brush, and come across and go ahead and paint that. And then you might want to have a little scrap piece of paper to try it first. And you're just going to press it down straight and straight up. Isn't that cool? It really makes a beautiful rose. So what we're going to do is now we're going to go on our good aqua board. The aqua board is actually got um, kind of a clay surface. So I'm going to come across. I think I want a little bit less water right there. And I am going to kind of design and put it straight down here. And if you don't wiggle it and just go straight down, you'll get a nice print. Then I'm going to do the other one. I did two different pieces of romaine so that I had two different images, two different roses basically. And I'm going to set that right in here. I'm going to do three so we have an odd number. So there'll be one that will be similar to the other one. That one didn't print across there, but that's okay. We can kind of fill that in. And then I'm going to do this one again. And we'll just kind of do it up here. Okay. I can actually take and rework this a little bit. Should be able to match it up and get that piece that I missed. I used to do a lot of stamping, so I should be able to hit it. I did. Okay, good. All right, so I'm going to let those dry. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take different plant materials. I've got some different leaves here, and I've got some little foliage. And I'm going to do the same idea. I'm going to rinse out my brush really well. I'm going to take and use the hooker's green. Again, I don't want it really, really wet. I want it to kind of come. I'm using the belly of the brush, the side of the brush. And I'm just going to hit the tops of things. I'll put it here where you can see it. So I'm hitting the back of the, the leaf because if you hit the back of the leaf, you're more likely to get more of the veins that you want to get. So I'm going to put that right here. And then there's a number of ways you can press it down. I usually take another piece of paper and come over and do that. I have a little doorknob, two doorknobs, two little wooden doorknobs that I screwed them together and then glued them and they make a really handy little brayer that it just fits your hand perfectly. Look at that. Very good. I'm going to ghost this one. When you ghost something, you're doing it down a second time. And when you do that, it gives you a lighter version of the same thing. I think there was enough paint on there to possibly get another image. It did. It did. So now I'm going to get a different sized one. So I've got some different ones I've got from the yard. This is a big one. And I think that's a little too big. I'm going to take this small one here. 
And I'm going to take and do the same thing. Take our color and just brush across. You could use ink, but because we're doing watercolor, you get um, a little bit more of a variance with it than if you just did it into ink. So we're going to push that down here. And here's another way. You can just do it with your fingers. Remember I put a piece of paper over last time and did the, the little brayer that we made. But, um, Baron I should call it. There we go. And let's ghost this one. One, two, three. Let's ghost our little one here. And then we'll put a little one here, even ghost it again. So it's very, very light. Okay, so there we've got a start. We don't know which direction we're going to do it. We're going to embellish this more. But what I'm going to do is show you what it looks like if you do it on a hot press paper. So this was the aqua board, which is that clay surface we talked about. So it's a, on a pa wooden panel. And now we're going to do it on a regular piece of paper, watercolor paper. And it is watercolor hot press, which means it's smooth. So it, if you want to remember that smooth means something has been ironed, that's kind of the way I think of a hot press paper. We're just going to put some down here and see the differences. Press straight down, straight up. Don't do any rocking on it. Okay, and then I'm going to do another one with this one. This time I'm going to take just a little bit of quinacridone violet and change the color by having a little bit of a different tone in there. We'll just put it here. You can just play with all kinds of things. See, it gave a little bit of different. And then we're going to come here and put another rose right up here. I like that. I'm going to do roses everywhere. There's a ghosted, right, because you've done it again. So let's overlap here. We'll just play. One, two, three, four, five. Let's put a, another one there. So you can get quite a few out of there. And then let's do one here. You can do the little note cards, anything you want to do with this. Okay, then um, you could even take blades of grass and, well, it's not kind of a blade of a grassy plant, and you could stamp with it. You know, the, you can go outside and kind of find all kinds of things. And again, I ghosted it a little bit by having it printed numerous times. So that gives you the idea that um, that shows you it prints totally different if it's on a hot press. And then we have our regular watercolor paper, which I use more often, and it's the cold press, so it's got a little more texture to it. Let's take off a little bit of that paint so we've got a fresh start. You can always cut it again, too. You've got, you know, it is a piece of romaine lettuce, so you can always cut it again and have it be a fresh cut. Let's get a little bit more on there, match it up again. And you can see it doesn't take um, as much of the imagery when you're working on the textured on this as it does when you do the cold press, because the cold press uh, is smoother excuse me, the hot press is smoother and it will be a little bit um, easier to get the print, printing down. But that gives you some ideas. We're going to uh, have some other ways that you can embellish this. But you can see that you've got some things to play with and that's really the whole idea is to experiment. Don't worry that everything's perfect on something. You can get all of your veins and everything and then we're going to come back and embellish this with some pen. So another thing that I did here well, off camera, I will show you now, I have this really nice little branch that came out for spring. And what I did is I just took this little piece and I drug it through my mixture. It's kind of going between the quinacridone, nickel quinacridone gold and quinacridone rust. And then I just laid it down and I just printed it and I got these little bits. And so that's what I did in these areas. And it's dry now. I needed to have it dry to show you the embellishments. I love pen work. You could certainly leave it in its natural state, state like this, or you could add a little bit of pen. I'm just using a regular permanent Sharpie, ultra fine. And what I'm going to do is just kind of enhance what I like. So I'm going to come through. I'm not going to outline with a straight line. I'm going to do little skippy lines because that will allow me to keep it more in that natural look. So 
it's really a preference, and if you make a lot of these, you could do some of them with pen and others without. So I'm going to just show you some of the things that I'm pretty common to do. A lot of you that follow my work, and some of you that are starting to follow my work, you will see that I love the use of line. So it would not be unusual for me to do some of them without the pen and some with. And I will do some of this off the camera and I would have it at the end of this video that you can see what I've done to finish. But I can make this leaf that was very jagged, have it be jagged in my imagery here. So I'm going to just kind of keep that. I will come back and do more, but I love these little, I love circles. So I'm going to add circles to this little, that's that little branchy budded thing that I slapped down on here with some paint. And I can just come through and embellish what I want, add to it. Because like I said, I love circles. They're just so fun. I can bring some line down so that there's some connectivity. This can be behind here. And the other thing, so I'm going to continue more off of camera with the pen. So know that I'm going to come back to pen and you will see that. But I also wanted to let you know that at any point, you can come back and you can kind of embellish, bring back some of the color so that you have the watercolor brighter and lighter, you know, different values. Know that you cannot do pen at any point on the surface when the, the watercolor is wet. You will smear it and you will ruin your pen. So a pen is never used on something that is wet. So I'll kind of stop at that point. You'll be able to see more that I'm going to do um, as, you know, more that I finished out that you weren't on um, the video itself. I probably will take a little bit of a yellow tone and just bring a little bit of a pop of the azo yellow into some of the leaves to just brighten up. But this will work out to be a lovely piece and it's very fun to do. You could look outside and just find lots and lots of things to print with. This was to pretty much with what I had in the refrigerator and out in the yard. As okay, so you can see that I've done a little bit more of the pen work and I came back and did a couple places that I put the quinacridone rose in, but not equally so that it's light. You know, you have the white of the back, background. You've got a light middle tone and a very dark so I kind of varied that, came through, put a little bit more pen work in, um, did a little more embellishing on that, and then just added a little bit of azo yellow as just a touch in there. So you can see, and then I signed it. So you can see that works out as a very nice piece. You could have it just like this. You could have it framed. It could sit up on those little tiny easels. Another way I do it is I take, a, these are called a cradled board. So it's a board that has a thickness. This is a thin one, you can get them up to two, three inches deep. This one I would end up hanging on the wall because it won't stand on its own um, as well. You could get it stand on its own. And then what I would do is I would mount this with glue on there. And then it makes it even more of a finished piece or a different look. And you can see I did a gesso that I left it kind of rough. So you've got the texture here and then you've got smooth and rough. So it just gives variety. So I thought that you might like to see this is one of the ways that I present my work quite often. So thank you for joining me. I would love to hear from you of how you've done your uh, printing, especially since we did it Romaine Roses. I think there's just an endless possibility of what you can do. Linda Amon, Amon Arts, thank you for joining me.